how to use sources effectively. Hi, okay, so let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use sources effectively. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna give you a four-step process on how to go about using source information, citing it, and then explaining what it is that you're using. And once again, my handwriting is so bad. If you're writing a paper that uses sources, you're doing a research paper, you're doing some sort of a literature paper that relies heavily on source material, these four steps, super important. In fact, if at any point in the paper you aren't doing any of these steps, you probably have a problem, right? Because you're no longer talking about your source material. Attribution, quotation, or summary paraphrase, citation and explanation. Attribution is when you are, you're introducing who you're talking about, right? So it's kind of like an introduction. So it could be something like, uh, like if I, you were quoting me in a paper, I'd say, you know, Lauritsen, or you could say uh, Jacob Lauritsen, um, English teacher says, blah, yada, yada. Does that make sense? So. The, the introduction of the author and the source, that's your attribution, right? You're not giving credit yet, you're just setting up for where this information comes from. This is important for lots of reasons. One, you look good when you use a source that is smart, that's credible, that's, that has, uh, you know, some reputation, right? So when you use a source, their reputation uh, reflects onto you. So if you're only using good sources, someone who knows what they're doing, they look at your paper and they're like, oh, this person's good. They're citing all the right sources. But let's say there's like a, a really prominent scholar, someone who knows so much about this topic and you don't mention them. Well then uh, you start to look like you really haven't finished researching the topic yet. Does that make sense? Um, or if you're using a source that's biased and you don't seem to recognize that, you look kind of bad. So flip that around. When you are taking control of your source material from the beginning, you are going to frame it the way that you want to frame it. Now, obviously, you're not distorting information in any way. You're just setting it up so that it's it's clear from the start what you are saying. OK, so your attribution is your introduction of the the source and the the author of the source. Makes sense. And depending on on what you're doing, you don't have to mention both. Just, you know, one or the other is probably good. Right. So you you say who is talking or what the source is. Right? Then you get to the quotation, which could be the source itself, right? This is your content. These are the words or ideas in your content. These are the words or ideas that you're getting from the source. Now, let's be clear from the beginning. If you use someone else's words or ideas, you have to give them credit. Every time. No exceptions because first of all, then you're no longer using the source, right? You're, you're stealing their work. You're plagiarizing and that's, that's not cool. Plus, it, it defeats the purpose of research in the first place, right? In research, the process is supposed to be transparent. You're supposed to show where all your stuff comes from so that people can duplicate what you've done to get the same result or they can double check your work and it helps to add to your credibility when they can see what you're doing, right? There is no reason in academic research to really hide any of the work that you're doing. Sources make you look good. Showing the process makes you look good. It all looks good because that's the point. You're adding to what people know about a topic or you're giving your specific unique perspective and you're explaining it. So all these steps help you to do that. All right. so. Your quotation step is when you actually use the source. 
Now I say quotation because it rhymes with everything else and I like that and it makes me feel special. But <clears throat> this is, it, it doesn't have to be a quotation. It could be a paraphrase or summary, right? So what's the difference between quotation, paraphrase, and summary? Well, quotation is when you use someone's exact words, right? If I say English is cool and you write English is cool in your paper, you put quotation marks around it. If, if I go on this lengthy explanation and I explain why English is cool, but I never say English is cool, and you put it in your words to say, well, you know, Larson thinks that English is cool, great. You've paraphrased and you've even summarized it. All that is great. In all those cases, you still give credit, but that's where that would go. You introduce your source, you use the content from the source, then you get to the nitty gritty specific stuff. And this is your citation. In English and the humanities, the language-based classes, the most common citation style is MLA. MLA stands for Modern Language Association. They're, they're the organization that's come up with this specific style, which is tailored towards writing about literature, um, language. And so it, it relies heavily, drop my marker. It relies heavily on words, right? Other source styles that are more about the, the scientific findings are gonna look very different because they're not focused on the words. In MLA, we're all about the words that the author said. And so quotation, citation, super important. It's also gonna look different than say an APA paper, right? Okay, so your citation, we'll cover how to do that in a different video, but this is where you put it in, your in-text citation, which is, you know, basically you're gonna have the author's uh, last name, page number, whatever. In this case, I just threw MLA, right? Period at the end. Okay, after you've done that, all this can be in the same sentence. But this, what follows, is so incredibly important. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes. They think that they can just, you know, take source material, drop it on their paper, and move on, and that the reader's gonna get it. This is not using the source effectively. Using a source, yes but it's not effective until you explain it. Because remember, you're setting up the point that you're trying to make, right? So why wouldn't you explain it? You may feel that it's obvious to the reader, but don't assume that. And don't fail to take advantage of the opportunity to make your point, which is the purpose of the paper in the first place. You're trying to make a point. This source helps you do it. This is the step where you explain how this relates to what you're saying, or you're explaining how this is significant to your topic. We good? Okay, so let's run through this one more time and then I'll give some bad examples because I only give bad examples. Okay, so you start with attribution. This is um, you name drop the source, you introduce them, then you go into the actual quotation, which could be a direct quote or it could be a paraphrase, whatever, but you're actually using the content from the source that you introduced here. You cite it at the end of the sentence, and then however long it takes, this could be several paragraphs, but you follow that with an explanation of the source material. Now, in a language-based paper like in an English class, this is super important to follow a process like this because it's a great structure to help rely on the text and explain it. And it keeps you focused on what the text is saying. If you stop paying attention to what the text is saying and you just start focusing on what you think about something, you can get off track, you can start to ramble, and you start being a little more, um, well, you're making a point without justifying it, perhaps, and that becomes a problem because it's okay to have an opinion, 
but you have to defend it, right? It's the reader doesn't need to believe you for any reason, especially in an academic paper, because the whole point is you don't expect them to just trust you. You're going to show your work so that they can double check what you have to say themselves, right? So again, attribution, quotation, citation, explanation. So introduce the source, use the source, cite the source, explain the source. This is super important. If you get this down, you're going to realize just about any paper, you're going to be on one of these steps at any moment. Okay. So you start at the beginning of paper. Let's say you're writing about Huckleberry Finn, right? So you can say, here's your attribution, the very beginning of the paper in Mark Twain's famous novel, the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, that's attribution, right? Then you start to, um, you set up your quotation and maybe this is a summary. Uh, Mark Twain tells the story of a boy named Huck Finn who runs away with Jim, blah, yada, yada, right? So that's your quotation. You give your citation at the end for where people can find where that information comes from. Then you explain why all this information you just gave is significant or important to the reader. And if this is say the intro to a paper, like we talked about, in a previous video about outlining how to write an essay. Um, at this point, you're going to take advantage of the groundwork you've laid to introduce your topic by explaining what's significant about it. Your explanation might be a great opportunity to bring in another source or several sources. It's all great. The more sources, the better. The mistake that many people make is they spend the majority of their time saying what they think without justifying it with a source without bringing in someone else who agrees with them or as an example for the reader to look at so that they can see what you're talking about another mistake that lots of students make is that they will just take a quote from the paper or from say a story and they'll just drop it in. They won't do attribution at the beginning to explain it. And so the sentence starts with a quote, ends with a quote, has citation, and then never gets explained. You're only doing two out of the four steps. You aren't wrapping up the content very effectively. You're just dropping it in and assuming that your reader is going to understand. Don't make that assumption here. Here's, Three more steps for you. Okay. Okay. Here is different mark. Here are three steps on how to go about using a source. So we had attribution, quotation, citation, explanation. Within that, you also want to use this idea lines up with it. So you've got Step one, it, when you're going to tell your reader something, you tell them what you are going to tell them. That's too many words. Say preview. You're going to preview what you're about to say by saying what you're going to tell them, right? Then you tell them. then you tell them what you told them, right? So you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. Those four steps I just showed you basically do that, right? Your preview, where you're previewing the source is your attribution, right? Telling them is the quotation, your citation, and then telling them what you told them is the explanation of the source so that you help them to see what is significant about what you're trying to say. Let me give you another bad example. Ready? Okay. So you, when you are writing a paper, when you're making a point, you're taking all the source material in, and you are giving your perspective on what you're saying to your reader, right? Someone else can look at the exact same evidence and come 
away with a very different idea. Which is what makes your perspective significant, you just have to explain yourself. So that's why outlining and using process like this helps you to stay focused and helps your reader to follow what you're trying to say. So, bad example. Ready? So, I've put a bunch of dots on the board. There's a lot of different ways you can connect these dots. Your first thought might be to just draw a circle, right? But you can connect the dots to make a very different picture. So, for example, let's say you do this. What could be a circle is now some sort of a, an asterisk or a star, right? Or, you know, maybe it's starting to look a little bit like a basketball or something else, right? You could take all the same dots and make a very different picture based on how you present the information to your reader. That's why it's so important to not just drop it in and assume that they understand. You have to explain it. If you don't explain it, you are assuming that they understand you. And that's kind of like, and here's another bad example. It's like going into court and uh, you have to defend yourself, right? So, um, and you think the evidence speaks for itself and your, your lawyer, closing arguments, they walk around, they pace in front of the jury and they're like, well, I think the evidence speaks for itself. So, uh, you know, please vote not guilty. And they sit down. You'd be totally stressed out, freaking out. Like, why didn't you make my case? Why didn't you explain why I'm not guilty? Well, that's what you do in your paper, right? It has nothing to do with guilt. It has everything to do with, you're trying to make a case. Make your case. Don't assume your reader knows what you're trying to say. Is that? Take every opportunity you can without being redundant. 